The theorist we will be going over today is Jacob Koonin. Who is Koonin? Jacob Koonin was born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1912. He graduated from Iowa State University in 1939 with a doctorate's degree. In 1946, he became an educational psychologist. In the 1970s, Koonin did an extensive amount of research about classroom management and he did two major case studies in regards to that. His focus was on preventive classroom discipline and lesson management techniques. What did Koonin do? Koonin originally started his research on student behaviors in the classroom. However, he ended up changing his focus onto teachers and how they prepared or proactively managed their classrooms before the behavior even occurred. Koonin did his research in the classroom environment to know the effective and ineffective habits of teachers. Koonin identified many teacher behaviors that contributed to having an effective classroom. He also wrote a book titled Discipline and Group Management in Classrooms that was published in 1970 about his research findings. Koonin's model comprises of three key concepts that we will go over today. The first key concept is teacher behaviors. These are behaviors that a teacher displays that impact a student's behavior. The second key concept is movement management. This is the flow of instruction a teacher displays while doing lessons. The third key concept is group focus. These are ways that behavioral problems can be minimized by the teacher using appropriate instructional strategies and activities. We will be going over each concept in a little more detail. The first key concept, which is teacher behaviors, incorporates things such as whippetness, desist and ripple effects, overlapping, and satiation. The first teacher behavior is whippetness. It is defined as a teacher perceiving everything in all areas of the classroom at all times. This means that plainly the teacher is aware of everything that is happening in the classroom. Events, activities, and student behaviors are all being monitored and the students know that they are being watched. What does whippetness mean in a classroom? It basically means that the teacher has her eyes everywhere. It means that not only are you watching the students, but they know you are watching them. I really like the little message about the cell phones to students. Even though it would be more appropriate for much older students, it shows that the teacher is serious in the students knowing that he or she is with it. Another teacher behavior is desist. A desist is when the teacher engages in efforts to stop misbehavior. Students in the classroom should already know the expected behavior. However, if they are not following instruction, the teacher calls attention to the behavior to try and correct it. Desist also can lead to ripple effects. Ripple effects are when the teacher is calling attention on one student for their misbehavior and it ripples to the rest of the classroom causing them to behave better. The following scenario is what a desist and a ripple effect can look like in the classroom. The desist would be that during your lesson, you turn around and ask a student to take their feet off their desk and put them on the floor. The ripple effect would be that after calling attention to that one particular student, other students who have their feet on their desk move them to the floor as well. Another teacher behavior is overlapping. Overlapping is a lot like multitasking. It is defined as what the teacher does when they have two matters to deal with at the same time. Koonin found that the teachers who can overlap are better able to demonstrate with itness. What does overlapping look like in a classroom? Overlapping can look like control chaos. There are several things happening at the same time, and the teacher is able to deal with all matters. This was a great snippet I found online that shows what multitasking could look like in a classroom. I will give you a moment to read over it.
The last teacher behavior our book discusses is satiation. Satiation is when a teacher teaches the same lesson for so long that the students grow tired of the topic. There are several things you can do if you notice satiation occurring. You can show a genuine zest and enthusiasm for the topic. You can make a positive statement about the activity. You can point out that the activity has a special intellectual challenge. What does satiation look like in the classroom? As you can see, the students on the left are bored and look tired of the topic. To change the student's perspective, the teacher can say, Hold on, class. This is about to get interesting. A little enthusiasm can go a long way in changing the interest of a lesson. The second key concept, which is movement management, incorporates key terms such as jerkiness, stimulus bound, threat, dangles and truncations, flip-flops, overdwelling, and fragmentations. The first movement management term we will go over is jerkiness. This is when a teacher is having a lack of lesson smoothness and momentum. To dig a little deeper, smoothness is when a teacher keeps the learning activities going without being distracted, interrupting students, or abruptly changing the direction of the lesson. Momentum is progressing through a lesson at a steady pace without interruption, not too fast and not too slow. Another movement management term is stimulus bound. This is when the teacher has students engaged in a lesson and something else attracts the teacher's attention. A scenario to further explain stimulus bound is a teacher who is teaching a lesson and there is a student being disciplined outside her door. She diverts her attention to what is occurring outside. The teacher should stay focused on her lesson and avoid the distractions. Another aspect of movement management is threat. This is when a teacher bursts in on students' activities with an order, statement, or question without being sensitive to the group's readiness to receive the message. A scenario to help you understand threat is imagining students are working on a group assignment that they have two weeks left to complete. The teacher bursts in and asks if they are already done. She doesn't even give them the chance to notice her approaching them. This action means the teacher is not being sensitive to the group's readiness to receive the message. It would be more appropriate to ask the students in a more sensitive manner where they are in terms of project completion. Another part of movement management are dangles and truncations. A dangle occurs when the teacher starts an activity and then leaves it, hanging in midair. A truncation is similar to a dangle. However, the teacher does not resume the initiated, then dropped activity. These are both behaviors that should be avoided by teachers. The teacher should try to follow smooth flow of instruction. Flip-flops are also a part of movement management. These occur only at transition points, such as when the teacher terminates one activity and begins another and reverts back to the first activity. Flip-flops are important to understand and avoid because they confuse students who eventually lose their focus and begin to misbehave. The last terms mentioned in our book that relate to movement management are overdwelling and fragmentation. According to Kunin, these are two different slowdowns that occur. Overdwelling is when a teacher dwells on a corrective behavior longer than needed or on a lesson longer than required for most students' understanding. Fragmentation is another type of slowdown when a teacher breaks down an activity or behavior into subparts even though the activity could be performed easily as a single unit or an uninterrupted sequence. It is important for teachers to recognize these slowdowns and eliminate them from instruction. The third and last key concept of Kunin's model mentioned in our book is group focus, which incorporates things such as group alerting and accountability.
Group focus occurs when a teacher makes a conscientious attempt to keep the attention of all members of the class at all times. The picture below shows you how students are interested and the teacher is making an attempt to keep the students engaged. Group focus incorporates two additional aspects. One aspect of group focus is group alerting. This is the degree to which a teacher attempts to involve learners in learning tasks, maintains their attention, and keeps them on their toes. An example of group alerting would be randomly calling on someone in the class. If a teacher is in the habit of calling random students, it keeps them on their toes to be ready at all times. Another aspect of group focus is accountability. This is when the teacher holds the students accountable and responsible for their task performances. This way, misbehavior decreases. The Coonan model has many key concepts and strategies that can help create successful classroom environments. Lastly, it is important to note that Coonan believes teachers should accept responsibility for learning and should demonstrate effective instructional techniques that contribute to positive learning behaviors. Teacher responsibility equals positive learning behaviors.